Hey, what's up everybody? Chris Souders, Slunger Cat Outdoors, back with you again today. And today, we're gonna to be digging into Structure Scan. Give some tips on the settings, show you how I have mine set up, and then give you a little bit of an idea of what you're looking at. Stick around. So let's get started here. So what are we looking at? Uh, this is a side imaging screen on my Lowrance HDS-12. And what you're looking at, the center here, is your boat. The black is the water column. And then this is a flat image of what is on the bottom of the river or body of water that you're on. So to get started with the settings, I like to keep mine where I'm looking at about 100 foot on either side of the boat, between 80 and 100. That's what I got confidence in. Um, that's how I got used to reading and being aware of where my boat is compared to where the structure is. So that's what I recommend for others until you get used to uh, what you're looking at and where it's at compared to where you're at on that body of water. Uh, frequency, I leave mine on 455. Contrast is auto. Uh, my color palette, I like the blue. I'm able just to see more shadows, more returns. Um, as you can see here, the, the white is a harder return and the black is the shadow from where that cone is coming in. It's basically as if you was, if you was in the bottom of the water on the bottom of the river and you had a really bright flashlight and you're shining it to this structure here. It's gonna shine bright on the front of it and then it's gonna give a shadow on the back side of it, okay? And what we're looking at here is an old blowed up dam. That is the reason it's given such a hard return back to us. I like to keep my color palette on nine, the blue, but play around with it, uh, what you feel confident in, and you know, just really what you can use to make yourself more uh, aware of what's down there and what you're actually looking at. In view, you can do left and right. Left only if you just want to look at one side of the bank. Right only or straight down. Now for anybody that watches the channel, if you have any questions on straight down imaging, I have a straight down imaging video that I will leave in the description. Make sure you go back and check it out. Advanced settings. Surface clarity is a big thing for me. I like to leave mine on high, but we'll turn it off so you can kind of see everything up here. It's kind of noise from the motor, um, things of that nature. I like to leave mine on high just to clear it all out so I can get a good crisp image of everything that's down there. Um, let's go back and change this to left and right so we can see both sides. And once again, you guys can see that I have it out to about 100 feet. Um, that's easily changed with uh, these two buttons here or you can add and take away from that using your plus and minus. Range lines, if you are interested in wanting to be able to see an actual line um, from your boat to where that structure may be beside of you, that's a good feature to have and to use. I prefer mine off uh, with Lowrance units. You can touch that image or that structure and put a waypoint on it and go directly back over top of it. Uh, for anybody that bumps or drifts, you can flip your left and right. If you have this unit mounted in the back of your boat, you definitely want to do that so that you're, as you're looking at the unit, you're looking at the correct side of what that image is showing you. So now what are we looking at? Let's get turned back around here. Get that back right so I know exactly what I'm what I'm looking at and where I'm at. Now some of this stuff that we see here is wood. Uh, we come across like I was talking about there the old lock and dam system and we'll go back across that and kind of point some stuff out 
maybe we'll be able to find a fish and show you guys what a fish looks like on side imaging and just give you guys a little bit of an idea of what you're looking at so that you know whenever you go out and you find it that that is what it is Now this here is just completely smooth bottom, mud particularly. Mud can be really good in the summertime and this time of year, which is fall and winter. All right, we're starting to come back into some of that structure now. And you don't want to go real fast. You want to take your time and, and I like to go three to five miles an hour that really gives me a good clear image and depending on you know how clear your water is um, how muddy if it's stained up if you had a lot of rain or anything will depend on how clear your images will come back as well getting back into it now now you can see as we're coming up starting into it you can actually see the defined line there's an, a dark line here okay that is actually where that like a drop-off is going down into the bottom of the river right there that's a little trough and you can see that defined line and then you can watch that defined line all the way around this cover and this structure. Now, these are all big rocks, big blowed up chunks of concrete. But you can see little pieces of wood that are caught up in this. And that is absolutely great to see because anytime that I get wood and rock or wood and concrete together then that gives the fish both the best of both worlds in my opinion and they really really are drawn to it now you can, on the left hand side of us you can kind of see how that as it gets closer to the bank you know we're going across that old blowed up wall and it's just you know it's about 50 foot on either side of the boat you know, we got the 60 lines. We'll put them range lines up so you guys can see. The 40, and then it goes past the 40 line in between the 40 and the 60. So that's going to tell us that we're about 50 foot on either side of the boat. Now, if you have something like this or you come up on stuff like this, you know, that, that as that light shines down onto that structure, it's going to create these shadows behind these rocks okay now we're not going to be able to see what is behind those rocks uh, because that light or the you know the sound from the transducer the pinging which is what i'm calling the light just to give you guys an idea of what it's doing can't shine past that okay so that is the reason that it's creating that shadow behind it now, something I like about leaving this water column in, some people like to take this water column out and just bring the picture together. And you can do that on some images or some sonars. But I like to leave mine the way it is so that I can kind of see those drop-offs a little bit better. Take them range lines off and we'll do some different color pattern palettes give you guys an idea of you know what the different color palettes look like and we got orange green this is like a brownish color gray there's another green and then blue
All right, folks, there you go. Some information on what you're looking at and how to set your settings on your side imaging unit. Hopefully this helps. Hopefully this will give you guys a better understanding of what you're looking at and give you guys just that little bit of confidence that you need to get started um, with side imaging. If you have any other questions or any more in-depth videos that you would like to see on side imaging particularly or anything uh, for that matter, make sure you leave them in the comments. Till next time, don't forget to hit that like, subscribe, and notification bell. We put out new videos each and every week. Thanks for watching.